All right, here we go. So guys, do you guys have your pencils with you? Yes. Okay. So now we're going to do we're gonna, these questions. Remember the ones we did last week that they were these competition questions for second grade competitions. And they get harder and harder as you move on. So, now, Jason, Jason, honey, if you need to speak, you raise your hand, sweetheart, okay? And I'm going to call on you. But you can't just kind of start talking in the middle when Mr. Kramer's talking, because then it would be complete chaos. Does that make sense? Jason, does that make sense, buddy? Yes. Okay, good man, good man. So, Guys, there are 90 marbles in a bag. 20 of them are red. So let's write down uh, R20. And 30 of them are blue. Let's write down blue 30. And we don't really have to write the word red or the word blue. And all the rest are white. So you've got your color and the number and the number. Now, now we've got all marbles are the same except for their color. Now, if this person picks one marble out of the bag without looking, which color marble is she most likely to choose? Red, blue, or white? Now, we know that there are a total of 90. So the total, write down the word total of 90 marbles. So can you raise your hand if you can tell me how many white marbles there are? Because the only one we don't know right now are the white marbles. And I'm going to let Eleanor, are you, you're not in the picture yet. So I want to make sure you're with me. Um, Eleanor, because Jason put his hand up, do you have an idea of how many white marbles there are? But I have a question. Yes, sir, Jason. Why does the ear tire so, so just the two people here? Why do you just have two people? When you say two people, you've got one person is choosing a marble. So you've got red, blue, white marbles, 20 reds, 30 blues, a total of 90. And they're asking, which one is she most likely to pick? if she puts her hand in the bag without looking. So we need to know how many white marbles are in the bag. Does that answer your question, Jason? Yes. So, so Eleanor, do you know how many white marbles there are? 40. And how did you come up with that? How did you come up with that, Eleanor? That is perfectly correct. Now, Jason, Jason, honey, you're talking while I'm asking a question to Eleanor. Eleanor, can you tell me how you came up with that answer? Eleanor, can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me, Eleanor? Okay, great. So, Eleanor. I want you to speak and tell me how you came up with 40 white marbles, because that is correct. 
but I just want to know how you got it. It's really important. Can the answer to make fifth key? Because red and blue together make 50. And then what did you do with 50 and 90? How did you come up with 40? 50 and 50 make 100. That's true. But how did you know that there were 40 white marbles? And Jason, do you want to help out? Did you come up with 40 white marbles too? Yes. And how did you come up with 40? Because you said you plus 20 plus 30 equals 60. And that minus 10 equals 40. Right, that's one way to do it. Eleanor, what I thought you were gonna say is that you knew there were 90 total and you took away 50 from 90. And when you subtract 50 from 90, zero minus zero, nine minus five, you get 40. So. Anyway, now that you know how many white marbles there are, which color marble is she most likely to pick? And Jason, why don't you answer that one? Which one is she most likely to pick? Red, white, or blue? White. white. Right, exactly. Exactly. Really, really cool. So when you, this is actually the beginning of the rules of probability, okay? We're learning here the beginning of the rules of something called probability. Can you guys say that word, probability? Probability. Right. And probability means if I put my hand in the bag and I'm not looking, there are 40 white marbles and there are a total of 90 marbles. So can you tell me, can I divide 40 and 90 by the same number. Do you guys know what I could divide 40 and 90 by? So if I cut 40 by a certain number and 90, what would be the biggest number that I could chop off in pieces of both 40 and 90? And Jason, you are muted, just so you know. Any ideas, guys? Do you see that they both have a zero on the end? So yes. is 40 a counting number of 10 and is 90 a counting number of 10? So we can divide 40 by 10 and 90 by 10 Eleanor, can you tell me how many times 10 can be divided into 40? Like if I counted by tens, how many tens would there be? Four. That's right. And Jason, Jason? 
if I divided 90 by 10, what would I get? Uh, Louder, please. Nine. That's right. Nine. So guess what, guys? The probability of choosing a white marble is four in nine. It's four in nine. So every time, every nine times you pick a marble, you would expect to choose four white marbles. Can you tell me the probability of choosing a red marble? What's the probability of choosing a red marble? Any ideas? If the probability of choosing a white marble was four in nine, and remember there are 20 red marbles, what do you think the probability of choosing a red marble would be? Jason, are you working on this? Yes. Okay. You should write it down. The number of red marbles, the number of total marbles, and then do the same thing that Mr. Kramer did by dividing by 10. And that will give you the probability. Probability is a lot of fun. Okay, what do you think, Eleanor? Two over nine. Oh boy, that is amazing. Jason, did you get two over nine also? Yes. And now let me ask you guys, do you know what the probability of a blue marble would be. And Jason, I'm gonna let you answer this and you might see it right off the bat. You know that there are 30. Now, what's interesting guys, is that we can actually, we can actually simplify this even further. So we know that 10 goes into 30. How many times, Jason? Three. Three. And, Three. and Eleanor, 10 divides into 90 how many times? Nine. Yes. Now, this is the fun part. The really, really fun part is can we divide three and nine by the same number? What number divides into three and nine? Uh, three. And how many threes, Jason, go into three? One. One. And Eleanor, how many threes divide into nine? Three. Yes. So guess what? The probability of choosing a blue marble is one in three or one third. The probability of choosing a red is two in nine. And the probability of choosing a white is four in nine. 
So it, this is your first uh, problem that you've done using probabilities. And they're a lot of fun. Now, you might also look at a square. And I love looking at squares. Can you guys draw a square for me, please, on your paper? And can you split it up into nine equal sections? So if you make a square and then you draw two vertical lines that's up and down and two horizontal lines, which means across that are equally spaced out, you get nine. Now, if I want to represent a probability of four, whoops, four ninths. How many of these would I have to color in? How many of these squares would I have to color in? What do you think? Four. Right. Four. Guys, four. Right. Right. If I color in four squares, this is the probability of choosing a white marble. Four of nine. What if I said to you, okay, I now want to do a probability not of four ninths but of two ninths how many would i color in two right two. now you wouldn't believe it but the next question i'm going to ask you is now remember we just did two ninths, we also did four ninths, and I'm gonna, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm now gonna erase that, and I'm gonna ask you one third. Remember, that was the probability of choosing a blue marble. How many would I have to color in? Now, this is a tricky question because the, all the other ones I asked you had a lower number called a denominator of nine. This one is one third. So how many would I have to color in? Three. Wait a minute, Jason, how did you know? that I had to color in three. How did you know that? Three. But Hi. why? Three. Eight yes. Nine. Right. One. So one third is Hi. the same. Three equals three. Right. Oh my gosh. So guess what? If the probability of choosing a red marble was two ninths, and the probability of choosing a white marble was four ninths. Look at what happens when we color in all the probabilities. Four ninths, we'll do it, even though it was white, we'll do that in green. And the red marbles were two ninths. It covers the entire square. It covers the entire square. Now, if you guys really like probability, we can do some really, really fun 
problems with probability. And I would love to do that with you guys. So let's, let's keep that as an idea. Now, the next one we're gonna do, I will read this to you. Gabe writes a number in each cell. Now, by the way, this is called a cell. Each one of these squares is called a cell. So there are five cells in this diagram. He writes a number in each cell. So the sum, what does the Eleanor, what does the word sum mean? Eleanor, what does the word sum mean? Is it, yes, it means plus. It means addition. And the sum of the three numbers in the row is 20. The sum of the three numbers in a column is also 20. Now, I'm going to color in the row in purple. I'm going to color in the column in blue. So columns go, guys, can you do this with your hand? Columns go vertically. Go like this, Jason. Eleanor, Jason, pay attention. Jason, Jason, show me vertical. Show me a column with your hand, good. Show me a row, horizontal. Show me a row, horizontal, good, good. Now, if the sum of those numbers must equal 20, and he's already filled in three of them, what number should he put where the question mark is? And if you answer it, you have to explain to me how you got it. And, and you may want to focus on the middle cell first. Great. And J Jason, hold on one second. Let Eleanor think about that a little bit. And, and Jason, can you tell me what number goes in the middle first? Jason, can you tell me what number goes in the middle? Seven. Seven. And so Eleanor, if seven goes in the middle because the row equal 20, what must be where the question mark is? Eleanor, were you able to do that? No. Do you know what eight plus seven is, Eleanor? Fifteen. So if eight plus seven is 15 and the column must add up to 20, come on. All you have to do is take 20 minus 15. Jason, what'd you get? If you, if you got five, that is correct. That is correct. Now, why don't we do another one just like that? And let me see if I can draw it really fast. So the rules are similar, except for this one, for this one, 
each row and column add up to 10. So instead of adding up to 20, they add up to 10. And I want the same answer, meaning I want the same cell with the question mark. So Eleanor, this time you tell me what has to go in the middle. Remember, if the row equals 10, and you know three plus two, what does that middle one equal, Eleanor? Five. And Jason, if the middle cell is five, then what is that bottom cell, Jason? Go. Four. Four is correct. Now, would you guys like a real challenge? Would you guys like one that's even harder than that? Yes? Yes. Yes. Okay, let's do it. Okay. Now, I want you, Eleanor, to choose the sum number. So the first problem we did had a sum number of 20. The one I did had a sum number of 10. Can you choose a challenging sum number for us? Go ahead, Eleanor. I want you to choose one. 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 Oh my God. I don't even know if I could do one with one. We would have to probably use negative numbers. No. Now, Jason, what did you say? Can you say it slower? Uh, Jason? Jason, if you if you speak, Jason, if you speak slower, I will be able to understand you much better. So you speak clearly, the same way I'm speaking right now, as clearly as possible. I think you might have said ten, but I don't know. It was very choppy. Can you say it again? But we already did one with ten. We just did one with ten. So I'm looking for something that would be a little more challenging. Twenty. We twenty. We already did one with twenty. Let's try one with fifteen. We're gonna try one with fifteen. So I'm gonna give you the question mark, and now I'm gonna give you the numbers. Um, eight and two and let's see eight and two and therefore why don't we try uh four and what number has to go in the question mark so you guys work on that Always fill in the middle cell first because that's the logical, easiest one to do first. All right. So Jason, talk to me about how you approach this. A plus two equals 10, 15 plus minus 10 equals five. So where does five go, Jason? Middle. The middle, right. Right, very, very good. Now, Eleanor, were you able to figure that out too and then figure out the question mark? Did 
because you know what five plus four is. And if you take that away from 15, that will give you your answer. All right, Jason, you want to help her out? Go ahead, buddy. Six. Six. It is six. It, and, uh, and Eleanor, can you explain why this has to be six? Why does that have to be six, Eleanor? I don't know. Well, can you tell me what four plus five is? Nine. Yes. And if you subtract nine from 15, what do you get? That's right. You get six. And that's why the question mark is six. Now, these problems can be done with any number. Now, what if we really went crazy here and we used a number where the sum was 100? 100. And we said, that this number here was 25 and this number here was 35 and this number here was 20. Now let's do this together. Here, we first have to add, come on guys, 25 plus 35. So go ahead. 25 plus 35. We add 5 plus 5 is what? Is 10. 10. So it's, and Eleanor, look at the screen. We have 0, carry the 1, and then 1 plus 2 plus 3 is? Six. That's six and therefore 60. Now we have to subtract 100 minus 60. And when we do that, Eleanor, what do we get? 40. That's right. And now if 40 must go in the middle, Jason, what number must go at the question mark? One, two. Yes, it Four, also two. has to be 40 because 20 plus 40 is 60 and 100 minus 60 is 40. Awesome job, guys. Now, we could do these with huge numbers but I'm gonna let you practice those on your own. Now, here's the next question. The next question we have is that Gordon designed a five-day exercise plan. That means he's going to do exercise for five days. Do you guys do exercise? Eleanor, do you exercise? Yes. What kind of exercise do you do? Ride a bike. Oh, you ride your bike. Jason, what about you? What kind of exercise do you do, Jason? Soccer. Soccer. What is oh, soccer. Oh. Great. Now, if Gordon runs, each day for three days. And then he walks each day for two days. If he starts on November 1st, 
then, and he repeats the plan during the entire month without taking any breaks, what's the total number of days that he will run, and we're looking for the run, during November? So that's what I want you guys to do. Remember, he runs for three days, he walks for two. Runs for three, walks for two. So why don't you see if you can, oh, hi, Stella. Hi, Stella, can you unmute yourself and say hello to everybody? Stella, may, say hello to everybody so we know we can hear you. Hi. Hi. So Stella, do you, we're doing these wonderful problems that I'm gonna send you after, after this class. Um, but this one here, this guy, Gordon, he's gonna do a five day exercise plan. He's gonna run for three days, then he's gonna walk for two days. Run for three, walk for two. And the question is, how many days in November will he actually be running? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna circle the run in blue and I'm gonna circle the walk days in red. So let's do the blue run. Run, 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 walk, walk. 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 And finally, run, 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 walk, walk, and the same thing. Now, who figured out how many days he ran in November? And Stella, have you been able to do this? Are you looking at the, the screen? Yeah. What do you what do you think, honey? Um, and I'm not just going to ask you the run days. I'm also going to ask you the walk days. Eleanor, are you able to do this as well? And what did you, Jason, what did you get? Three, nine. I'm sorry, can, can you, can, Jason, can you say it one more time, please? A little more clearly. Three times six equals ah. 18. Wow, three times six equals 18. So Eleanor, do you see that he did six groups of three? Six groups of three. Stella, do you see that? Now, Stella, I want you guys to count with me. Let's count by threes. We're gonna count by three. Let's go. Three. three. Six, six, nine, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen. So guys, if you can count by threes to 18, you know how to do multiplication. Because multiplication is just repeated addition. Three plus three plus three plus three plus three plus three is 18. Now, how many days did he actually walk? But when you answer this, you have to answer it the same way Jason did. When he said three times six is 18, here we're multiplying a 
different number by six. Eleanor, what number are we multiplying by six this time? And, or Stella, do you see it? How much, Stella? Eighteen. Oh, Stella, the noise is on your end, so I just muted you. But can you unmute yourself and tell me how many days he walked? Eighteen. Uh, Stella, can you unmute yourself and stay unmuted for just a minute, please? Now, can you 18. Say, you think he walked for 18 days? Stella, is, is it is it also three times six? Eleanor, what do you think? Eleanor, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Eleanor, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Okay, good. So Eleanor, how many days did he walk in a row during the five day program? He ran for three days. How many days did he walk, Eleanor? How many days did he walk, Eleanor? Two times six. And what is two times six? Twelve. Right, so next time raise your hand and you can answer the question. Stella, do you understand why he walked for 12 days and not 18? Stella, do you know why he walked for 12 days and not 18? Stella, raise your thumb if you can hear me. Okay, so are you looking at the screen right now? You're, you seem to be looking to the right. Um, Stella, what is the reason why Eleanor said 12? Can you, ex can you explain that, Stella? Stella, will you be able to answer my question? Stella, Stella, can you acknowledge that you can hear me, please, and answer me if you will be able to answer the question? Okay, so go ahead and answer the question then. Why, why did Eleanor say 12? How was she able to do that? Stella, would you like some help, honey? Would you like some help in the explanation? Yes. Okay, Eleanor, can you please explain that to Stella? Eleanor, when I ask you a question, honey, can you please answer it right away? Because you definitely knew that it was 12. Go ahead and tell Stella how you got it. Six times. Eleanor, I think you're going to need to say more than the words six times. You're going to need to explain how you got 12. And Every time. So Stella, Stella, can you look at the at the camera, please, for me? Look at the camera for a minute. Now, Stella, if you are walking for two days in a row and you do that six times, can you tell me what is two times six? Well, therefore, therefore the number of days walking was 12. The number of days running, Jason told us, was 18 because he ran for three days. Now, we're going to do this problem again 
but we're going to do it a little bit differently. And Stella, I'm going to ask you to answer first on this one. He changed his program. He is actually going to run for only one day, and then he's going to walk for four days. So he's going to run for one, and then he's going to walk for four days. Now, you know that there are 30 days in the month. So yeah. there are how many groups of five? Who can tell me how many groups of five there are in 30 days? Go ahead, Jason. Six. So how many days will he run and how many days will he walk with this new program? So Stella, tell me how many days he's going to run. Remember, he's going to do it one, six times. He's going to run on the first and the sixth and the eleventh. Stella, can you answer the question? Go ahead, Stella. How many days does he run? Come on, he runs one day every five days. Times six, Stella. What is one times six? Six. Right. And Stella, if he walks, look at this at the at the um the camera. If he walks for four days in a row. And he does that six times. Now this one, you might need some help. Eleanor, do you know four times six? Or Jason, do you know four times six? Stella, what is four times six? 24. Right, right. And that is really, really fun to think about different ways of doing an exercise program. And we'll come back and do more problems like this because they are really, really important. All right. The next one is, I think, kind of fun. And it has to do with trains. So Jeffrey has a train set that has one engine and three cars. Now the cars are colored yellow, red, and blue. How many different ways can Jeffrey arrange the three cars in a row behind the engine? So I want you to write it down and, and you can just write R, B, and Y, but how many different ways can he arrange the cars in a line behind the engine? So this is gonna take a little bit of time for you guys to think about. And if anyone has any ideas, I'd love to hear them.
Okay, so Jason, Jason, what do you what do you think? And I'm gonna I'm gonna ask ask you guys to give me the different order. But Jason, what do you think? What did you come up with? How many different ways did you come up with? Six. 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 Now let's see if that's right, Eleanor. And Stella, what did you guys come up with? Six. Now, I am going to write down six. I also endings. got six. Now, do you, does anybody have a good way to explain how they got six? <laughs> Stella, go for it. Because I realized I had two threes. What do you mean, honey, two threes? Because two times three equals six. That is true. Tell me how you use that to arrive at the six different combinations. I, I agree with you 100% that two times three is six. So can you give me the first combination? Who can, any, any, anybody can give me the first combination. Go ahead, Stella. My first one was R-B-Y. Now, if you're doing this systematically, what would the next combination be? Eleanor? R-Y-B. Oh my God. Yes, that is exactly right. Eleanor, do you know that you and Stella together and Jason just used a mathematics called combinatorics? Oh my gosh, this is a special type of mathematics. Now, Jason, what would the next two be? B. Um, B. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't hear you, Jason. B. B. So B Y R, and then what comes after B Y R? Uh, ah, Stella, what would the next one be? Y B R and Eleanor, last but not least. YRB. Now, I have to tell you something, guys. I am extremely impressed with what you did. So impressed that I'm actually going to give you a new question because we're out of time. And I'm going to call this the purple car. So now there are four cars in a row and and p for purple and i want you to try to do this right now with your parents and see if you could figure out a way to do this remember what stella said earlier guys she said Two times three is six. And that was the answer. Maybe you could use the same logic when thinking about your answer. All right, guys, I'll see you next week. And then next week, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to tell me what you got for this one. And even if, and if we get it, maybe we will even do five cars. All right. Say goodbye to your buddies. Say I'll see you next week. Thank you.
You're welcome. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.